but for people that are sitting there right now thinking like, all right, give it to me one more time. What is your, you know, generalized un- description of Bitcoin so that people can get on the train and follow you into the deeper parts? Yeah, I mean, the, the very, very high level, easy, someone who doesn't know anything about it, right, is that, you know, the Bitcoin and the blockchain are, are just a, a ledger in the sense that, um, now this isn't right exa- at all, but it's right enough um, that you can think of the blockchain and Bitcoin as just this list of accounts and account balances. You know, it's two columns, right? <laughs> Goes all the way down. And all of the money you know, th- that exists, it's on that sheet in those two columns. And everybody um, in the Bitcoin network has a copy of that sheet. You know, so they all know who owns what. And whenever somebody wants to spend Bitcoin, they, they transfer from, you know, they erase out one little column and they write it in a different little column and, and, and that's it. That's how it works, right? The real magic, you know, that's simple, right? The question is how, right? Like, like that is like the what is very simple, right? And then you say, well, but well, well, how, right? And then we need to start going into the tech and, you know, and I think that, what people find is the more they learn about it, it's that um, it's not so clear that, you know, that this, that this works the way they say it does. You know, it's, there's a little bit more to it than, than you might, than you might, might expect. Yeah. You have this sort of Dunning Kruger effect where when you first start getting on, you're like, yes, I, I'm, I have this spike in my confidence on what I know. And mm. eventually you hit a point where the more you learn, the more you're like, oh my God, I don't understand this. And you kind of plummet all the way down, just like any PhD student trying to study anything, <laughs> right? You start wondering like, will I ever hit the bottom? So talk about the, the how and why this has been a big enough how to, to make you be, you know, as, as integrated into the crypto world as you are. Yeah. So I guess the, I think the simplest way to explain it is, is how I explained it back in 2013 to my mentor. Right. Um, because that was, you know, it was brand new at the time. And you know, it, that, that's uh, how most people, I guess, thought about it is that you, you think about the new system, something like a Bitcoin versus uh, what we used to use or what most people use, which would be debit and credit cards. Right. Then you got your name on it. You got a number on it. You swipe the thing at the point of sale um, to buy something. And what used to happen or what still happens at the point of sale is that you know, there, there's not like a little bank inside the card reader machine, you know, it's, um, it sends a message uh, on uh, through the internet or through the phone lines or, you know, whatever they, whatever they got, it sends a message to the bank and says, hey, bank, does this guy have the money? You know, does he have the money he says he has? Um, and the bank says yes or no. And then it sends that message back. And that's what takes like three or four or five seconds while you're swiping your card is you're waiting for that message to go, come back, takes a couple seconds. You've been approved and then, you know, you get to buy the thing and walk away. Um, and so, like, what, what made that happen? Why did that work, right? It works because J.P. Morgan or, you know, any bank, let's say it's J.P. Morgan Chase, um, you know, big bank, my bank, um, has this list, right, where they have all their clients and they have all their money that their clients, you know, own and all the outstanding checks that haven't settled yet that, you know, their clients have written that maybe, you know, they can't spend and, you know, they have all that, right? And so what ends up happening is that basically I'm trusting JP Morgan, right? To, to get it right, right? I'm trusting this bank to have gotten it right. And they're regulated by the federal government, you know? And so Bitcoin, the way, the way that would work um, is that, let's say that JP Morgan isn't, isn't even here anymore, right? That point of sale device that you swipe your card into, let's pretend like every device has a total list of all the money owned by everybody. Every single point of sale device everywhere has, has this list, right? You, you wouldn't need to send a message to anybody when you're, when you're checking out. You know, I don't have to check with JP Morgan to see if you've got money. You know, there's no three seconds, right? It just checks the list and sees that you have the money and boom, right? So who do I have to trust, right? I don't trust JP Morgan, but I am trusting this list. And that's the question. Well, then why should I trust the list? And then that's where you get into, okay, well, I need to get into computer science and the hashing and the encryption and all the things that, you know, make it so that I can trust this list. And my point is the real, my thesis, right, is that 
um, you, you to, before you had to trust J.P. Morgan. Um, you, you're not trusting anyone like that anymore, but you are trusting something, right? And, and that's the real thing that I think people don't understand about Bitcoin is that a lot of people, they get enamored with it. They think, I don't have to trust anyone anymore. You know, this is trustless currency. And really, you know, it's not that you don't have to trust the banks anymore. It's just that you're trusting someone else, right? Now I'm trusting these miners who are processing transactions and doing these things. You know, so I've moved my trust from the banks to the miners. Is that better? Like, <laughs> I don't know, Vance. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you're interested in conversations like this, you might want to join the Articulate Ventures Network. There were a patchwork of thinkers looking to explore different ideas, having our ideas respectfully challenged, and figuring out different ways of looking at the world. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures.